Good morning. Thank you for joining us. We take a look at headlines in our newspapers on this program. It's called Off the Press. My name is Felicity Aze. We will be joined shortly by our guest. But let's begin. This day starts with handover killers of our men for trial. Please tell army. Security Council orders investigation into killing. Death toll rises to six. That's the continuing uh, disagreement and war of words between the Nigerian police and the uh, Nigerian army. Uh, if you've been following that story, or if you've not, this is a good opportunity uh, for you to go take a look. Uh, at the top of the paper, just above the masthead, you will see World Bank investment in Nigeria hit $11 billion. you find details on page 9 of the paper. And then uh, European refineries jostle for Nigeria's Agena oil over high yields. Mm. All right, let's see what is also here at the bottom. House to appeal court ruling on Edo Assembly crisis. That's um, another... A part of the paper, page eight of it. Thank you for your patience for staying with us and off the press on PLOS TV Africa. My guest joins me now to make sense of some of these headlines I've already reeled out to you. Uguchuku Ikako, a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, just before you stepped in, uh, taking a look at some of the headlines on the front page of this day newspaper, uh, we'll do a quick flip to the back just to uh, make sure we get it all. Um, okay, Ikechuku, anything but Jonathan, right? Uh, that's a question for all of us to ponder on. But... Let's get your thoughts on this big one here. Hand over killers of our men for trial. Police tell army. So what, what's happening between the Nigeria police force and the uh, Nigeria army is a, is a shock and it's a big disgrace. Uh, it shows how it shows that our security agencies don't understand what they're doing. All right. Uh, throughout yesterday evening, they were busy exchanging uh, tweets and having like a tweet war, sobbing each other on, on, on Twitter, and it's shameful. And you ask yourself, who is the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Who are the security chiefs? All right, uh, the, the the army have done something that is not supposed to, to to have happened already. But at least by now, there should be like an internal investigation, you know, to check out what happened. I think a panel, so a council, security council, orders investigation into killing. That's one of the riders. If if if, if they've done that truly. Right, there shouldn't be any need for both uh, agencies, when the police issuing and statements. the army, to be issuing statements and be uh, dragging each other and be asking, okay, who did this, who did that, on social media pages. All right, uh, it's, it's not called for. Whoever is a social media handler, the rest of them is wrong. And uh, whatever that's happened shows that uh, to an extent, it shows that our security agencies are not working together. If the army, like the police rightly said, attacked them, all right, uh, rescued a known kidnapper. And right now the police is asking, where is the kidnapper? Where is this person? And in the process, killed actually three police officers. So it shows that, okay, where is where is the place of uh, collaboration between the security agency in terms of, okay, uh, intelligence gathering, intelligence sharing? So if these are the same guys that, 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 that will pay taxes to protect us every day, and they're making a mess of themselves on, on a national scale like this, it shows you that, that uh, a, a, lot, a lot of things are are wrong as, as a country as, where we are. So uh, it shows they don't understand what they are doing. But the saddest part of it is that the person that calls themselves the GCFR, the Grand Commander of Federal Republic of Nigeria, that uh, at the end of the day, these guys are under you. These guys are the people that you you, you, uh, you say, do this, do that. Or, like, these are people that you employ to work with you to deliver the Nigerian mandate. They are not doing that. And what we see our president not saying anything. Nothing is happening at the moment. Nobody has been suspended. Nobody has been expelled. All right. So and the investigation, we don't know what is going on. Rather. They are uh, subbing each other on online. So it shows that our security agencies within themselves are not collaborative. And this is not what we need, bearing in mind that our sec internal security architecture as a nation has failed. So we need them to uh, get their house in order as quickly as possible so that this country, so that the people in Nigeria will feel safe. And for those that, that were involved in, in the murder of the police officers, they should be court martialed. And that is right, that, that's the right approach well, to for, it. For anybody to be court martialed in the fastest sense, there has to be an acceptance of wrongdoing. Um, as it stands now, both parties are trading blames. Um, just to dig a little deeper, maybe it is, um, this is just an outward exposure of the entire 
internal crises that continue uh, to plague uh, security agencies, information sharing, so to speak, because the accusation is that one security um, 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 agency is going to uh, carry out an investigation. The sister security agency has no clue that it was a covered um, investigation. So what do you say about that seeming lack of synergy in information sharing? Because if there had been information shared, probably we wouldn't have the situation in the first instance. I agree with you, right? Uh, we have, we have this, what, we see, what we've seen so far is a failure of intelligence gathering uh, information sharing. But we have to point it out that in Taraba, all right, there is no state of emergency. The army has no business being there at this point. All right, so the president didn't wake up and declare the state of emergency because of maybe a crisis and rest of it. So at the end of the day, the army has no right, has no jurisdiction. It's a civil affair. And the army, has, nobody has invited the army. There was no place they said that the army should, should come in and help uh, fix the uh, insecurity challenge uh, in Taraba. So what is the army, what is the Nigerian army doing there at the very first place? Because that is the question. Because if you don't have a constitutional mandate to be there, you don't have any business being there. And every thing that you are saying is inconsequential because it does not make sense. The Nigerian police force has a constitutional mandate to do whatever they are doing. If they are doing it well or not, that is another argument. But on this particular case, the Nigerian army has no business being there. And also, it shows that even the Nigerian army, because uh, the police officers say that they, sh that, uh, they, they kind of uh, raised awareness and sh uh, told these guys that uh, this is a friendly fire. You shouldn't fire and the rest of them. So if they cannot decode a simple uh, information as this, it shows that uh, these are the same guys that can protect us against the whole troubles and the challenges that we're having with insecurity. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of failure on their part, on our security agency. This is it. Army and the police of they are the key. If this has happened within the NSDS or the Nigeria Road Safety, so okay, okay. But this is the army and the police. They are the yeah. core of our security agency, and it's a big failure on their part. The Punch newspaper is next for review this morning. Uh, we have court sent Shawari to 45-day detention. Nigerians attack FG. It has two riders. Detention order depicts DSS misguided mischief. That's uh, CDHR. We will challenge court order, says Femi Falano. Uh, we also have Ram Market in Kara Ogun State. Uh, this is ahead of the Muslim festivities um, in a few days' time. And then, of course, the slain policeman Buhari conveys security meeting. Police demand kidnappers whereabouts. Uh, it has two riders. How did a millionaire kidnap Kingpin escape with handcuffs? That's the um, FHQ. Force headquarters, uh, slain cops, arrested Evans, rescued Buhari's monarch. That's the, the, the theme that we've just lost that were very valuable to the Nigerian police. All right, still on the front page, just been at those pictures of those men. Uh, Dahiru, Musa, Usman, Danzumi, and Mark Adiaile. That's the three gentlemen there. Just beneath their pictures, you see Atiku's petition, starved of evidence. Buhari APC, taxified driver, magistrate, trade accusations over alleged toucher, never once Lagos, Ogun, others on impending uh, flooding that has been sort of trending uh, for a few days now. If we go quickly to the top of the paper, we have total pension assets rise to 9.32 trillion naira. That's it on your screen. Uh, just beneath it, you see the headline. You are destroying APC, Party Governors Forum, DG tells Oshomole. It has one writer, says APC chair stubbornly inconsiderate of other options. Of course, we have the Nobel Laureate captured on the front page calling for uh, a state of emergency in the southwest. On the back of the Punch newspaper, we have Showare and the semantics of revolution. That's uh, Friday Musings. Uh, there's an accident scene captured on the back page, as it there. Um, a trailer and a car, two cars actually, in uh, Ogun State. Your thoughts quickly. Well, for, uh, for, for uh, Shori, what is happening to him? We we'll have to make it uh, clear to everybody. Uh, it's a political witch hunt. It has nothing to do with what he said, all right? Because there is no place. Nobody has proven that uh, Shori uh, said anything uh, inciting against the country, against the citizen. He didn't call for violence. Uh, in 2011, Muhammad Buhari called for revolution when we had the uh, Egyptian revolution, uh, the Hosi Mubarak time. In 2014, uh, Bolatin Ahmed Tinibu called for revolution. These guys are free, all right? Uh, uh, Buhari is, is, is a president as, a, as we speak today. Uh, nobody arrested him in 2011. Uh, um, Bolatinibu is an APC chieftain. Nobody arrested him. So uh, what is happening to Shore is a clear case of political winch hot. Well, um, let's the, look at the court case now. That, 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 see, the, the, the court, that the court uh, stamps something does not mean it's illegal. 
Uh, right. Well, the, 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 the um, position of the DSS, they yeah. said they provided video evidence. And from what I read earlier this morning, is that um, he had meetings, alleged meetings, um, with um, IPOB leader. Uh, Namdi Khan. He's a journalist. He had, is, 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 is he a, is, 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 Hold is, is, on. That's what they are saying. And then the court looked at this and felt these were strong enough evidence to hold this man for another 45 days while they conduct investigation. Well, see, I think at this point I have to disagree with the court. All right. Most important thing that uh, Femi Falana, whoever is in charge, is trying to is working on this to make sure that uh, uh, everything is fine. We, we, we have a steam president that said that if you lose the election, the, the drugs or the baboons arrested them will flow on the road. He, nobody arrested him. All right. This guy nobody could pinpoint that he had a meeting with uh Nambi or whatever whatever is his name is not enough to jail him first of all uh Shore is a journalist he has a publishing house all right so could it be tied to the fact that he's trying to find out what happened to this person so uh, it's easy for the uh, dss to come out and say okay this is there this is this is what happened they should get to work and make sure that they saw that whatever issue that the Nigeria police force and the Nigeria army is having. That is the core of their responsibility. Not trying to uh, uh, use uh, uh, Shore to uh, please whoever is the president at Asorok at this point. Whatever is happening to Shore has nothing, has no effect, has no bearing on our internal security, has no bearing on our security as this country. The guy has said that he wants revolution, he says some things. Yeah, he could argue some of his points that it doesn't make sense economically, all right? But it has nothing to do with trying to overthrow this country or trying to make sure that there is no peace now. Land. It doesn't threaten anybody, all right? They are doing a peaceful protest, and the police attack them. The same police that they killed, uh, uh, the army killed some of them a few days back, and they're now coming on social media to ask us to help them. Whereas when they were when they were dealing with innocent uh, civilians on Monday in Lagos, they were fine with that. So this illegality that we're trying to do, anybody can wear a coat and wear a, a uniform because you are backed by, the, by by law to uh, constitute one form of illegal act and rest of it. It doesn't justify it at the end of the day. All right, uh, let's see this one uh, before we go on. I want you to speak on this flawed warning. Let's it's being repeated. Uh, it's not just Lagos State. It's not just Lagos State. A, a, yeah. a lot of the coastal states across Nigeria talk about Kogi, Anambra, and never mentioned they close more than 15 states in Nigeria. But the fact is that in this country, we don't learn from our crisis moment. Something like this has happened in the past. Under Good Luck Jonathan, and the, the, a lot of private uh, sector uh, was involved to, to raise funds. At this point, nobody is saying anything, all right? Remember the last time there was a heavy flood in Lagos and the whole place was flooded? Nobody is saying anything. So it's shocking and it's sad because at the end of the day, people will lose their lives because most likely and people will lose their properties and somebody will not go and visit them and condole them which is which is what our vp has been doing consistently by now we should be hearing what has never done right the last time never was never was in the public space was because they were accused of uh, uh misappropriation of form by now we should be hearing okay what are the what are the emergency uh, uh, uh uh, procedure that NEMA has put in place, what are the short-term measures, what are the long-term measures, so this doesn't happen, uh, what are, how are they educating people uh, using social media, using traditional media, using the radio, so to tell people, okay, this is where you should be, this is where you should not go to, this is what we're supposed to be hearing at this point, but I can't, have you heard the information? I've not. Why, why do you think we have this transient um, mindset when the situation comes, we focus on it, and then when it's gone, we move on to something else. Why don't we have a consistent plan of action for situations like this? Because the rains will come every single year, and when it does come, it begins to look like it's just a headline again. Lagos, Lagos as it stands right, it's, our roads are flooded whenever it rains, all right? You can't move freely on the island, and on the mainland, the same thing. And uh, to answer your question, few few weeks back, when uh, Pafasharanti lost the daughter, all right, uh, the former governor of Lagos State, that's the APC chieftain, went there in his house and said that is the will of God. So we we'll have leaders who think that. Uh, 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 someone dying or something bad happened is the will of God. It's not the will of God. The reason why you are made a leader, why you are elected or you got yourself in whichever way is for you to fix issues. But if I will have a leader, who, their culture and their understanding, their mindset is that this is not our problem. Whatever happened is the will of God. And we can't make progress. Crisis, a uh, flood is not the will of God. We have cities like Venice uh, and the rest of them that were built on coastal way. People live there and try very, very well. So Lagos should not be or uh, other part of uh, Nigeria, Kogi, Anambra. It, it, it shouldn't be an exception. So we have leaders that need to wake up. And the fact is that we citizens will fail on our path, right? If you know, for example, our governor gave the Super Eagles one for four million a few weeks back. That's uh, Shaw uh, um, um, Bajde Sawulu. People have seen him in different functions. Why can't you ask him questions? Sir, why are you giving this poor money where we have issues of flooding to solve? What have you done over the last few uh, few weeks? But our problem is our leaders, right? See, there's a part for the leaders who blame them. There's a part for the followers. Because when you see your governor and you praise him and I say that he's the best and after sliced bread or everything, it does not 
not make sense. You should ask him questions. If you see a governor, if you see a deputy governor, if you see a representative, what have you done? That is that is how citizens, that is how activist citizens engage their leaders. And if you can't do that, they'll come back next one month or two years when people have someone have died to tell you that is the will of God. And dying is not the will of God. All right, uh, we continue with the Nation newspaper uh, for review. So many headlines to look at. Uh, this one, again, uh, is with a picture of the police officers that lost their lives on the front page. Uh, we also have at the top police army clash over slain officers, civilians. Uh, that's the Nation newspaper. Inside the paper, you will see Oyo Assembly confirms Mackinday's commissioner nominees. Uh, details on page 8. All right, at the very top, where you're looking at the picture of the president, you will see two headlines. Kogi, deputy governor, Achuba, suspended. We also have why there is security challenges by Buhari. On the other side, you see Lagos shots, 52 substandard pharmacies. Anger over CSS mom's ordeal. It will be signed 35 million pounds Everton deal to die by hanging in equity state. Uh, those are some of the stories there. Uh, we also have the, um, the current, the former uh, chairman of INEC, that's uh, Professor Iwu. Uh, he is in court. The court hears Iwu's bail petition. All right, we also have APC revolution call treasonable. On the back page of the nation, we have growing pains. And of course, hardballs have uh, Moses the mule. Uh, what's that about? You need to go check it out. I, I want to start with the situation in Kogi State. Uh, are you quite familiar with what's going on? The APC has now come out to, you know, suspend it. You see, uh, uh, APC is, not, APC is, is uh, what they call, uh, is an amalgamation of different interests. Primarily, they are not there to drive uh, governance for their people, all right? In Kogi State, the deputy governor came out to say that the governor has not paid him for more, right? Uh, he came out with uh, papers to uh, validate what he's saying, what they are saying so far. And instead of the party to look into it, why are they suspended? Why, why should be the end point to suspend the governor, right? And we know that Yahya Belu has failed constantly. Yahya Belu is, is, is the poster child of failure in governance over the last few years. He consistently has refused to pay salaries. Consistently, I refuse to. You see, if you pass through Kogi, you're going to Abuja, you're going towards anywhere. It looks like it's not a part of Nigeria. It looks it's underdeveloped. So, this is a governor. You should be driving the agenda of fixing your state, not going into a battle with a deputy governor. It does not make sense anywhere. Nobody should celebrate this. And if the APC, as a party led under by Adam Sushumole, all right, cannot step in and call both of them to order. And I don't expect him to do that because he doesn't have it in him. There is no way. See, the most important thing is making governance happen for the people of Iberia uh, and the uh, rest of them in, in Kogi State. Not the governor and the deputy governor fighting over allowances. Right? If the governor has been elected, uh, there is a constitutional that the, the constitution says that pay him so 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 uh, 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 money as arrears, whatever. Give it to him. That is what is that is what is uh, entitled. All right, because of his position as a deputy governor. And if the governor has failed to do that, is is a failure on the part of the governor. And we're supposed to have leaders that can work together to drive agenda for the people. They are failed to do that for the people of Kogi State. And now they're, they're fighting each other over, over alias. And you're suspending the deputy governor. So at the end of the day, the deputy, the deputy governor most likely will be impeached. And Yahya Bello will now bring in a deputy, another deputy governor that will be a rubber stamp to whatever he's doing. So it does not make sense. And we don't need that in anywhere in this country. Your thoughts on the anger over Siasia's mom's ordeal? It's, it's going to a month now that this woman has been kidnapped. See, the, the, what, what's happening to the uh, Siasia mom is, is unacceptable and is wrong. And it's Osho's failure on the part of state governors, all right? Uh, we know at the end of the day that the security architecture falls under the, under the purview of, 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 the, of the presidency. But the governor of, 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 of Bayelsa uh, State uh, uh, is not doing anything. Siasia is a national figure. This is a former uh, a spy goose player, former spy goose coach. The mom was kidnapped before, all right? This is the second time they're kidnapping the mom. Nobody is stepping in to do anything, all right? And maybe because of the money that they're asking at the end of the day, because they're asking for a quite period. And it's wrong, all right? For uh, a senior citizen to be held close to a month, all right? Uh, under pain, under anguish, uh, no access to food, no access to health care. It is not good. But and isn't there an underlying lesson for us? Because we cannot confirm categorically whether a ransom was paid in the previous instance. Well, this payment of ransom, is it not emboldening these kidnappers? And what is the what should be the long-term agenda of government in stopping this other than paying ransom? So we can confirm 
on this case. But we've known previous uh, cases where, uh, where the people that have been kidnapped came out and said, okay, we paid ransom, even when the police come with a different story. What, what was supposed to happen at this moment is that right now, this, like, the front page of the nation, the, the president said, where there is security challenges. No, sir, that is not why we elected you again. We want to know how you are solving the security challenges. That is what we want to know. But we can't hear that from him, all right? Also, the police and the army are supposed to work together to, to, to protect us. The army has helped to free a suspected kidnapper. So you, you now see that there is, a, there is a failure on the part of the security agencies to understand what is their primary tax and responsibility. And they are not doing that. And if the president himself is giving us excuses, instead of telling us, okay, this is what I've done, okay, this is the person that I've removed because the person has failed in doing his or her job. So at the end of the day, they have not sat down together to think about the long-term implication of this. Because at the end of the day, nobody is immune from what is going to happen. And nobody's going to, nobody is immune from a security failure and rest of them. So it's for them to sit down together and work on this at this point uh, both the rich are crying and the poor are crying so uh, nobody should think that i'm immune from all these things so and I would, just for us to, to ask them and the citizens on their own part i keep saying it we have a responsibility if you see a governor if you see a president don't clap for him Action ask him questions, questions. A world bank investing uh, 11 billion dollars in nigeria that's according to the con uh, country's um, director uh, he's saying they're investing in education health agriculture and other sectors have been beneficiaries of this said amount uh, we keep talking about you know some financial challenges and all of that what, what's your thought about i think, this? I, think it, I think it's a good one all right uh, it's good that no matter how uh, our, our economy over the last over the last uh, few months uh, the, the the landscape has not been attracting investors and if world bank is doing this thing uh, they might be doing it for a very good reason but for me i'm i'm, I'm skeptical of handing this money over to state governors all right or uh, state institutions if the skepticism of government no, they, because, because they have failed consistently <laughs> right they're failed consistently to prove themselves what when you when you hand over uh, finances to them to manage so if there is a way that world bank or whoever is in charge of the money can work with uh, trusted and proven uh, private uh, individuals private organizations that have proven themselves all right we'll have them across the country so that these are the ones that you can measure all right because if the deputy governor and the governor is fighting in kogi state how do you want to take money to that place who is who is, who is going to measure it for you who is going to get sure that the job is done because in kogi they need education in kogi they need health health care but is it the governor that is busy fighting his deputy governor that will sit down and do the actual work of governance so if the world bank is serious about investing in this country please please don't give that money to state governors and uh, our political uh, our, uh, political institution take it to private sectors that understand what the money is for and use it to uh, use it for social good Revolution now protest. That's uh, on the front page of Vanguard newspaper. Rumpus as DSS gets order to detain Showery for 45 days. It has a couple of riders there. The clear security emergency in Nigeria, showing can tells uh, Buhari, and then killing off policemen by troops in Taraba. Police accuse army of lying. We've treated that extensively. Nigeria inching towards a second civil war. That's a professor speaking. Amnesty International issues travel advisory on America. At the very top of the paper, we have El Zagzaki won't flee Nigeria like you. IMN tells El Rafai how donors' intervention ended 40 years of open defecation in Plata State. Alleged 1.2 billion hour fraud. Court remands ex-Sinek chair Maurice Yu in EFCC custody. Uh, we also have an update on the Koza situation. That's the rape saga. That's how the Vanguard is putting it. I will continue to be resolute, Busola Dakolo claims. Uh, a little bit of business here. We have NCC crashes, USSD charges by telcos to 4.89. Uh, Naira per session. Of course, on the back page we have sports. Your quick thoughts. I'm told we have uh, limited time. Uh, uh, for me, uh, uh, on the book of, on the um, Busara da Kolo issue, um, what has what has happened so far, and what uh, we've seen how uh, uh, Koza, right, under Biodun Fatoyibo, has tried as much as possible to use uh, police to intimidate this woman. And this is a man that we've seen over over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, there have been series of allegations uh, and sexual molestation. Uh, uh, people people have said, okay, this is what this guy has done. And no matter what he does, and it's sad that this same person can use the instrument of the state, you know, the police to intimidate uh, someone that, that has been molested, molested and abused over the last few years. It shows the kind of country we are in. But the good thing is that, the good thing is that uh, survivors are speaking up in this country. And even if it's going to take days or years, but the, the narrative is changing. And people like uh, Biodo Fatoyiwe that think that because of his privileged position in the state, he can do all sort of evil and get away with it. That time is changing. That tide is changing. And we have to encourage people like Busura Dakolo to keep speaking and keep demanding justice. If it doesn't happen today, it's going to happen. And, uh, and Justice must prevail. And for, for, for what has happened with El Zagzaki, I, I'm glad that the IMM is telling El Rufai because El Rufai ran away from the country under, uh, under uh, I think he had to 
Oh, that other president, yeah, Rodrigo. So uh, IML, I'm saying that okay, we're not going to do the same thing. And and it's it's good that I'm telling him because uh, you can't be a governor today and you forget about the things you've, you did in the past and feel that because you have you have immunity, you can say all sort of things. And then uh, for the DSS, for the DSS, and the uh, what is happening with Shore, uh, I think somebody needs to start speaking sense to him. And finally, on Professor Akin Teliwa, this is the former uh, NIA, NIA Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. So this is this is a scholar. All right, on international affairs and in terms of Nigeria relations and rest of the people should listen to when, whenever people like him and Shoin can make this call and freeze this country and get us moving again. Thank you very much, Yukuchika, for coming thank on the program. Always a pleasure. And of course, thank you for watching. This wouldn't be happening without you watching. So thank you again. Do enjoy the rest of your day and make sure you stay updated on what's happening in this country. It belongs to all of us. My name is Felicity Ezeweke.